Hey everyone, just wanted to bring you uh, the latest acquisition. Um, I've got plenty of 1911s. The one thing I didn't have is a Browning High Power. And I've always wanted a Browning High Power. Um, it's obviously a classic gun, and I love the look of it. I love that it's in 9mm, which is a lot cheaper to shoot um, every weekend than 45 ACP. So, uh, I think it was just last weekend, actually, that I went and picked this one up. Um, this one's a Browning. It's uh, the 75th Anniversary Edition, so it has on the top of the slide uh, 75, 75 years, 1935 to 2010. Let's see here if I can get it in the light. It's really nicely done up there on the slide. And the barrel, uh, caliber 9mm Luger. And then down here, um, it, it's made in Belgium, assembled in Portugal. I don't know how I feel about that, but um, it is a Browning. So I think that's uh, everything that Browning's doing nowadays. Browning's Ar Browning Arms Company, Morgan, Utah, and Mon Montreal. <clears throat> so the, the fit and finish, obviously, is, is beautiful. Um, the color on this gun is is almost a royal polished blue um, it's actually really nice color it's a it's a really nice color um, the wood grips are actually really nice and the the gun if you I mean if you if you know Browning high powers they just fit extremely well in your hand let me take the mag out it's empty I already checked this before but I'll check it again one thing I did notice is this hammer is an absolute beast to pull back. Yep, nothing in there. The hammer on this is, and I think it's uh, also part of the uh, um, the magazine system. It's got the magazine uh, detach function, so I can't pull the trigger and drop the hammer without the magazine in. But this hammer, honestly, is. <laughs> I, I guess with use, I haven't shot this yet. This weekend, I'll I'll shoot it for the first time, so it may just need uh, to be worked worked in. But the hammer is just absolutely brutal to pull back, um, and the 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 actual uh, trigger pull is pretty heavy. And I think that's also a function I've read on some of the forums of the uh, uh, the magazine issue. So whenever you pull the trigger, actually. Um, it's it's pretty heavy. I'm gonna dry fire it here so people can freak out, but I'm um, not too worried. So if you can watch here, there's a lot of take up, and then then there's kind of a crisp break further back. But right here, you can even see it on video. It's kind of a jerky pull right there. You can feel there's a lot of play in the trigger. Um, the last uh, when it when it breaks is pretty crisp. So here it's, it has ambidextrous safety. I think that's uh, Browning High Power um, standard, 1911 style thumb safety. And this one has the uh, three dot sights. Let me open it up here for you. The actual disassembly um, is pretty quick, similar to the 1911 pretty close. On this one you take it all the way back to the actual safety notch. It's hard to do this while looking through the camera. All the way back to the safety notch and then you push the, the pin back here all the way out. Actually I don't want to really do it on film but um, you basically push the pin out here and then you let the slide down, take it off. Um, recoil spring is um, a little bit different. It's it's kind of like more of the modern firearm recoil spring latched into the barrel, similar to a Glock or Springfield. It's not too much different. One thing I like though is uh, similar to a 1911. There's no um, there's no guide rod or anything right here. So if you need to check, let me lower this down. If you need to check for a round, you can always do the 1911 style. Push right down back here. Check to see if there's a round in the chamber. I like that. But other than that, um, other than the the, uh, the hammer being pretty stiff and um, the magazine disconnect kind of being a pain in the backside, um, 
it's it's just really well made. Everything you'd expect from Browning for a high power. The finish is great. Everything lines up perfectly. Quality is just really good. I can't wait to shoot it. Like I said, it feels it just feels great in the hand. Uh, the one thing I am not really worried about, but I know will happen, is I'm probably going to get hammer bite. If you can see here, there's absolutely no beaver tail on this gun. Um, the hammer just hangs right out there. So you imagine whenever you're shooting, if your hand gets up a little bit, um, the slide comes back and may pinch. The one thing I did notice, though, on 1911s, when the slide comes back, it has a tendency to push the hammer down a little bit more, and that's what gives you the pinch. Here, if you watch, when the slide goes back, the hammer's really not being pushed down as much as a 1911. So I'm thinking as long as my hand doesn't ride up too far back here, I'm fine. If I can keep my hand right here, I should be just fine, I'm hoping. But again, I have my biker leather gloves that I use with my uh, World War II reissue Colt 1911. So I can easily slip those on for this. I don't intend to shoot this, you know, a thousand rounds, two thousand rounds. It'll probably be a, um, you know, every maybe once a month, maybe once every couple months, take it out, uh, fire a couple mags through and be nostalgic and <clears throat> put it back in the case. This is one of those that is, isn't intended to be a, a 100% range gun. You know, I've got my Springfield, my Beretta, uh, 9 millimeters uh, to use as range guns. So this will be just for nostalgia and fun and history just to shoot this. So that's that. It's the Browning High Power 75th Anniversary. Show the top of the slide here. I've been talking so much that probably haven't given a good view on the rest of the gun, which is the whole point of the video. Now that I have fingerprints all over it, that I'll have to wipe down, but it's worth it. So there it is. Browning High Power 75th Anniversary. Thanks for watching.